The following program has been brought to you in part by Sennheiser and the Airline Pilots Association. On this episode, we'll tell you what eight cities you'll find expedited security in next, how Alpa is leading the industry in cargo safety, and a crew's reaction to a hijacking, including exclusive interviews. All of this and more here on The Flight Deck. Hello, I'm Sharon Barab. Welcome to The Flight Deck. ALPA hosted a cargo symposium in April to develop solutions for the gaps in aviation safety and security standards between passenger and cargo airline operations. For many years, ALPA has campaigned for one level of safety and security for all Part 121 operators, regardless of the size of the aircraft, the type of the payload, or where they fly. We've made great strides in closing the gaps between large and small passenger operations. This conference is intended to help close the gaps between passenger and all cargo transport operators. During the conference, Alpha leaders thanked Representatives Chip Kravak and Tim Bishop for introducing the Safe Skies Act of 2012. The bill I introduced yesterday, I dropped it last night, H.R. 4350 will mandate that cargo operations meet the same tested standards of safety as commercial passenger operations under FAR 121 and FAR 117. If passed, the legislation would direct the Department of Transportation to apply the FAA's flight and duty time regulations and minimum rest requirements to all cargo operations. The conference, which attracted more than 100 attendees, included speakers from Congress, regulators, airlines, labor, and industry. It's just another way that ALPA, the world's largest non-governmental safety organization, is leading the industry. News reports indicate that U.S. Airways and American Airlines could be one step closer to a potential merger. In late April, U.S. Airways announced that it had reached deals with major labor unions at American Airlines. U.S. Airways did not disclose any details of the agreements. While this doesn't mean the company has agreed to combine with American, it's an obvious first step in that direction. Known crew member, the expedited pilot screening program is set to expand this summer. Eight additional airports including Denver, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, Newark, JFK New York, LaGuardia, Reagan National, and Philadelphia will come online as soon as systems are ready. For regular updates, check out the ALPA app for iPhone and Droid users or visit knowncrewmember.org. Shuttle Discovery made its final flight this month, hitching a ride with a 747. The pair flew low over Washington for everyone to see, landing at Dulles International Airport. Discovery now calls the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Museum in Northern Virginia home. It's replacing the shuttle prototype Enterprise, which will now go to New York City. According to the Globe and Mail, the head of Qatar Airways says Canadians deserve better airline service to the Middle East. All made possible by increasing landing rights to Doha, of course. But Canada is not the only country Qatar has its eyes set on. Bloomberg also reported that the airline plans to start flights to Atlanta, Chicago, Boston, and Detroit within the next year. The move would double its U.S. network. It's part of an aggressive expansion plan that will increase its global destinations to 170 over the next three years. Are you taking the measures needed to keep your medical records spotless? Find out after the break. From the first time I boarded a commercial plane as its pilot, I've embraced the responsibility I have to the safety of my passengers and crew. And I have the best flight gear, even the headset, certified for commercial duty. It lets me concentrate on the task at hand, making this the safest flight my passengers will ever have. The feature-packed HMEC 26 provides long wearing comfort and more than 18 dB of noise reduction. Try the HMEC 26 on your next flight and hear the difference for yourself. Hi, I'm Elena from Zurich, Switzerland, and I have a question to ask a pilot. When you're in a holding pattern, how long is it before you run out of gas? 
Well, Elena, that generally depends on the conditions we're expecting when we're getting to where we're going. If there's a lot of weather or a lot of traffic delays, we carry a lot of extra fuel so that we can hold if we need to to get you there. That being said, if we're not expecting any delays or weather and something unexpected happens, which isn't very often, we sometimes can't hold as long as we need to and then we sometimes have to go someplace to get a little fuel to eventually get you where you're going. Summer is just around the corner and with it comes increased risk for extra sun exposure. Here's Dr. Snyder from Alpa's Aero Medical Office with some tips on how you can keep your skin cancer free. The time you spend soaking in the sun's rays increases your chances of skin cancer. Melanoma, the most dangerous form of skin cancer, may affect your medical certificate. While an aviation medical examiner is likely to clear pilots with non-melanomas, melanomas may require surgery or alternate treatments and close follow-up to maintain your medical certificate. To help you stay on the line and out of the dermatologist's office, follow these simple steps. Stay out of the sun during high intensity times between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Cover up when you go outside. Wear hats, sunglasses, long sleeve shirts, and pants. Apply sunscreen at least 20 minutes before exposure and reapply frequently, especially when you're in the water or sweating. Be aware of reflected sunlight off water, sand, concrete, and snow. And read medication labels for possible skin sensitizing side effects. Remember, Regular skin examinations can lead to early detection and cure. Fly safely and stay healthy. For the Flight Deck, I'm Dr. Quay Snyder. Now for a Flight Deck exclusive. It's been three years since the pilots and cabin crew of Canjet Flight 918 made international headlines. On April 19, 2009, an armed man broke through security at Jamaica's Sangster International Airport and attempted to hijack the flight while still at the gate. We sat down with Captain Jim Murphy and Captain Glenn Johnson to get their side of the story. He told me to get off the airplane. And uh, I says, I'm not leaving unless uh, some passengers gets off because you got to deal in good faith for this in order to get some fuel. And that's when he told Gary to, uh, he was going to shoot Gary, told Gary to kneel down. That was when the gun came off Gary and swung to me and the shot was fired. So basically I heard the bang and then I just hit the ground just went over this way onto the ground. And then a couple of seconds there, I thought it was shot, and I realized I couldn't see no blood or nothing. For nine hours, the hijacker alternated between demands for jet fuel and bribes and making death threats. Johnson became the sole interface between the hijacker and the Jamaican authorities. I can remember when one of the flight attendants started reading the Bible. It was very faint in the background, and I remember thinking this something's happening here and he started reading it with her. At one point in the evening he had bags, he put put bags over all the flight attendants heads. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to get executed at that point. Finally, a special forces team successfully stormed the B737-800 and apprehended Stephen Frey, the 20-year-old hijacker. After Frey was arrested, the crew was flown back to Halifax. ALPA's Canada Board President, Captain Dan Adamus, and Canadian Pilot Assistance Committee Chairman Captain Murray Monroe met the crew to offer their support. I think ELPA helped the most um, just in, in, in supplying some counseling. Things uh, as flight crew member never expected to deal with. Didn't know how to deal with press, didn't know how to deal with a lot of the questions we'd be asked, the feelings we'd have afterwards. And to have people who have gone through this um, help, you, help you through that and, and think of the things that you haven't thought of yet, it's nice to have that taken off your plate. Frey was found guilty on eight of ten gun-related charges and sentenced to 83 years in prison. If you'd like to see more exclusive footage from the interview, visit flightdeck.alpa.org. Now it's time to watch and win. First, congratulations Grant Fitzer for making it to the next round. You were randomly selected from the correct entries from our last episode. Grant will be entered into our grand prize drawing. Now on to today's question. What eight cities will known crew member debut in next? Visit our website to submit the answer for your chance to win. That's it for this episode of The Flight Deck. Thank you for watching. If you have any feedback, please let us know at flightdeck at alpa.org. Thanks again, and I'll see you next month here on The Flight Deck.